and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 2.2, Estimating Instantaneous Rate of Change. So in 2.1 we talked about the average rate of change, the average rate of change, but we need to talk about the instantaneous rate of change, which is a very significant difference. And to illustrate that, I've drawn this little car for you. So here you are driving this car, and you're going 80 kilometers per hour in a 60 kilometer zone. Shame on you. And because you are speeding, a police officer stops you and says, hey speeder, you're going to get a ticket. And you tell him, well, I know I was going 80 kilometers per hour, but for half of my trip, I was going 40 kilometers per hour. So my average rate of change is 40 plus 80 divided by 2, which is 60 kilometers per hour, which is well within the limit. So I'm fine. I don't get to ticket. And he's going to say to you, no, you're wrong. You're going 80 kilometers per hour right now, and that's what you're getting a ticket for. So what you're talking about when you're talking to him is the average rate of change, but what he's talking about is the speed on your speedometer, which is 80 kilometers per hour. That's exactly how fast you're going at a specific point in time. So we're not finding the average between two distant points, but we're actually finding it at that instant. In order to do that, we're going to actually find the slope of the tangent. What is the tangent? Well, the tangent is a line that cur touches a curve of a function at one specific point. It only touches it once. In order to do that, we actually have four methods. And I'm going to tell you a bit of a story, so follow along. Imagine that you have zero ideas about how to find the instantaneous rate of change, but you're a pretty smart person, and so you're going to try to figure it out. You know that it's important, and you want to figure out how to do it. So let's say we want to find the instantaneous rate of change at, uh, let's go with x equals 1. We're going to do this on the graph first. So we're going to take a line and we're going to try to estimate a tangent. So basically you take your line, I'm going to just take a random line here, and I'm going to try to put it on x equals 1. And then I'm going to rotate it. See how it's a secant right now? It's touching it in two places. I'm going to try to rotate this until it's only touching once. Oops, it doesn't like me though. So I'm just going to keep rotating it until it gets to touch it only one time. Just rotate it around. You can see that this is quite tedious. And I'm almost there. Kind of, that was, that was alright, but I'm not really quite happy with it. And I'm just going to keep going until I think, okay, I, I really only am touching it one time. Uh, this might be... Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, right? So you can see that's my... That's, that's a, that looks like a tangent, and it's touching it right at x equals 1. So in order to find the instantaneous rate of change, I'm going to estimate the slope, because this is now my tangent. So that would be my instantaneous rate of change, right? That's the definition. So to do that, I'm just going to estimate the slope. Well, let's see, it's kind of going through here. So the change in y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over the change in x, 1, 2, 3. So that's about 5 over 3. Oh, sorry, negative 5 over 3, because we actually have a negative slope going on here. So that's my estimated slope the estimated instantaneous rate of change. And as you can see, this is actually a really inaccurate way to do it, because if I had drawn another line and that was pretty close, I could get a completely different slope, but it could kind of look like it's a tangent. So we don't like this method. So being a smart person, you go, okay, I don't like this method. I'm going to figure out a method number two. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit more of an accurate method to find the instantaneous rate of change for x equals 1 in the same graph. Um, and this relies on the fact that we can accurately find the slope of a secant. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to choose a certain distance from the point. Let's say I'm going to go x equals 1 away. So I want to start at x equals 1. I'm going to go 1 backwards and 1 forwards. And I'll just mark those points on my graph. Here's um, at x equals 0 and then at x equals 2 right here. And I'm going to find the slope of the secant from this point, which is before, and then the slope of the secant from the point afterwards, and then find the mean of those two slopes. And that should be a better, a better uh, estimation for my tangent. So you could do this using... Oh, I was going to use a line. 
can use this use the graph to do that or you can use the slope formula I'm going to just use the slope formula in a second but I'll show you the two graph the two lines so here we have my two secants going through x equals 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2 so if I find those slopes it's going to be the first one so the preceding which is before is this this one right here so it goes from before the point to the point the preceding uh, slope is f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0. We can see that f of 0 is 5 and f of 1 is 4 so we'll just use those points so uh, 4 minus 5 over 1 that gives us negative 1 and the following slope which is right here okay it goes from 1 to 2 so that's going to be f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1 and you can see that f of 2 is equal to 1 so 1 minus 4 over 1 that's negative 3 so the instantaneous rate of change for x equals 1 is the mean of the two so it's negative 1 minus or sorry plus negative 3 over 2 which gives us negative 2 and that's the estimation of the slope of the tangent now if you think about what we just did you might notice that actually I've taken this plus this and then divided by 2 so I'm gonna write that out for us we took f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0 plus f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1 and by the way you could have used any interval I like to use an interval of 1 because it makes it convenient in the bottom we divide that by 2 that's the mean you add two numbers and you divide that by the number of numbers and if you look at this this is actually okay so these are both over 1 so we get f of 1 minus f of 0 plus f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 and it, if you can see it actually we've got a f of 1 minus f of 1 so this becomes f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 this is the slope of the secant for uh, x equals 0 to 2 so what I just did actually was find the slope of the secant from 0 to 2 so this method actually ends up being pretty inaccurate because if you think about what that line looks like if I'm doing the slope from here to here the secant from here to here that's not close to our point at all I'll just draw that in for you so you can see how bad it is <laughs> so it goes from it goes straight through here like this and th that's not close to our point at all and if we had chosen a bigger interval it would have been even worse right so this is actually what we would call a centered interval where we're centered around the middle um, and we don't actually touch our original point at all and this is going to be method number three which I will discuss in the next video